Hi. I hear sirens outside. So I am here on a rainy evening, sitting alone and pondering what to do with myself. Of all the options that have presented themselves for this evening, I feel inclined towards staying in, nesting a little bit, and pulling out some of my craft supplies so that I can do some kind of silly craft. So I started by um, putting water in this little jar so that I can wash my brushes. And then I pulled out some of my paint brushes that haven't been used in a very, very long time. Um, and then I'm trying to decide on what I should paint and what I should paint on <laughs> said items. So I figured why not make a random video of this process. <laughs> so here we go. So I will put this water over here. Um, so really I'm inclined towards painting this birdhouse that I found. So that is right here. This is a birdhouse that I bought at the Michaels Craft Store. Um, I don't go to Hobby Lobby because they're backwards and I don't agree with their beliefs. Um, so I bought this at Michaels and it was only 99 cents. And then with extra discounts, it became 50 cents. Um, so if you're ever at Michaels, I would recommend pulling out your smartphone and going to the michaels.com website and then looking at all the various coupons that are there. Um, because I guess they're fighting against a bunch of competitors, be they the big box stores or other craft stores. And for that reason, they have all kinds of random coupons that you can uh, cobble together to get a whole bunch off of whatever you're purchasing. So um, basically what I'm saying is that this, with all its beautiful accoutrements, only cost 99 cents um, originally, price on the tag, and inevitably, I believe um, the reason the prices can be so low are because these are being made in sweatshop tape operations in China. I'm pretty sure the tag said this was from China. And there's hot glue along the edges of the different pieces here, and I'm sure they were made by human hands, handmade by somebody um, in a place that probably didn't have good labor standards, and a place where they probably aren't making very much money. So I actually pondered that when I saw this birdhouse on the shelf for 99 cents. And I had to talk myself through some of the negative feelings I had about um, the possibilities of where this actually came from and how much pain was inherent in the processing of said birdhouse. Um, but that's because I think too much about everything. So, basically, um, I bought it because I think I deserve the joy it brings me to paint a birdhouse. And with what's on my mind lately, um, I just that I deserved it. Hence, I bought the birdhouse. So this is something I want to paint. I'm not sure how, what style, what purpose it will serve. I may just hang it randomly somewhere. But all the same, I think it's pretty cute. So this is one potential piece for me to deal with today. I also have this box that I bought a long time ago at a craft store. Um, this also could use some painting. I 
been thinking about for a long time what exactly to paint on it. I thought maybe some kind of Thai batik style or an Indian sari type design. Um, or even something Peruvian, multicolored. There's so many options for this little box. Um, I also don't even know what I would put in it. it looks a little bit like a coffin. <laughs> But it could also be a jewelry box. Um, I'm not entirely sure. Currently, I've been storing a bunch of junk in this box. So, I always start with the latch on the inside. Let's see. It is a patching kit for a bike tire. And it says on the back that it has vulcanizing fluid on it, which sounds pretty badass. And I also have these little things, cable tacks, used to tack or secure cable wire to walls, beams, studs, and baseboards. So it's another one of those random things that I keep thinking someday I might need them, but I haven't. Um, I also have a new Belgium brewery version of a bike repair kit that I can't open. But by the looks of all of this, you would think I'm quite the bicyclist, which I'm not. But this one's really cute. And it's got little instructions that are teeny, teeny, teeny tiny. Hmm. <laughs> tiny, tiny. Okay. Um, I also have hair barrettes and a part of a dried out sand dollar. So, just a random nonsense to keep in this little box. I won't be painting this today because it's too much work. So some of the other crafting supplies that I recently pulled out of my um, storage are paints, a whole bunch of acrylic paint, and a bunch of paint brushes. So these come in all different sizes. Um, and it says on the back that it's designed for decorative painting. So I guess it's important to note that it is not to be used I don't know, for outdoor house painting. <laughs> it would take a really long time to paint your house with these brushes. So these are nice. And then I have uh, larger brushes in various sizes for multiple different um, applications of different things. I was more inclined towards this one for the birdhouse because I think it's good to put a base layer on it and then I could draw additional stuff. So that's a starting place. Um, but some of the other crafty things came upon. Um, this isn't really a crafty thing, but this is just um, the item. They are tacks for a bulletin board. Which I happen to like bulletin boards, so it's nice to have tacks. And it's nice to have clear tacks because they sort of don't take attention away from whatever you're putting on the little tender. So, um, it's pretty exciting to have found that. I also found mechanical pencils. These are really great for Line and writing, 
And funny enough, it looks like they're officially endorsed by the Scantron test makers. <laughs> Which reminds me of being a kid and taking standardized tests. Um, but I found these, and there's also these kind of snazzier versions that have rubber to make your fingers more comfortable when you're using them. Um, so that's cool, right? Colors are probably better too. Yeah, these are all black, but they have colored pieces, and then these are actually different colors. These were likely more expensive. <sighs> so we have those. Put those here. We also have just plain old pencils. Which are good to have. And dry erase markers. So if I could get a dry erase board, I can write little notes to myself that are releasable, which is always a nice thing. Um, so my thinking really with this was that I would take the birdhouse and paint a base layer of white on it so that I don't have to paint multiple um, uh, coats of the different colors I put on. So if I want to put like a, a aquamarine, which is sort of the color scheme that I was thinking might work, <laughs> I was thinking of doing sort of a pastel theme to it. Um, maybe yeah, maybe like a 50s beak light type jade green base. Um, and then draw on top of that something zany. So, not really sure where to go with this, but thinking that a base coat would be a really good place to start. So that's why I have the white out here. So I was gonna shake it. And then pour a little bit here in the newsprint down. <clears throat> um, and I decided to put it in a place that was precarious and very easy for me to accidentally dip my elbow or fingertips in. So I'm always uh, thinking ahead about doing things the wrong way. So I'll just stir this white paint a little bit. If the shaking wasn't enough for it. And then it's going to look like that on my brush. And then I'm going to listen to the rain and then paint a, a coat of paint along the roof of the birdhouse. So once I went to a class that Home Depot was running on how to make your own birdhouse, and it was prefabricated pieces of a birdhouse and you sort of just went and they gave you this fun apron so you got to feel really important, really special and <laughs> then you glue the pieces together no, I think I nailed them together so you get a nail, a bunch of nails and a hammer and you have to have adult supervision and then you nail all the pieces together and then you have a birdhouse. And I took a lot of care and effort to really get my birdhouse right. And this birdhouse was a size that could be used by real birds. But I also was very concerned about whether or not it could become toxic had I painted it. And I really wanted to paint it. So after I had completed the birdhouse, I, I painted it a bunch of different colors, and I drew lots and lots of flowers on it, and I never used it as a real birdhouse. I don't know where that is, but this one, obviously, even for a tiny little sparrow or a hummingbird, wouldn't really be appropriate as an actual birdhouse. Um, but it is perfectly appropriate to be a tiny art piece that could be displayed 
on the mantel. If I had a mantel, or on a shelf, or on a Christmas tree, perhaps. It does have lovely little string to hang it up, but I would not let a bird in this potentially toxic environment anyway, even if it was of a real size. My computer keeps going off, so I have to keep turning it back. Um, this video is super quality. Alright, so I'm really trying to be careful around the window holes. And again, I'm just doing a base coat so that my other layers will look good. I don't even know if it's necessary. It just gives me something to do that doesn't require too much thinking because I want to get the colors right once I actually do the paint. Just trying to get within the windows like that. And being really cautious so as not to get a bunch of clumpy paint anywhere. If you've ever painted anything, be it a wall, chair, or something like that, you know how it is to get lots of paint on stuff. You really want to even out the brushes. So. I actually had already done this side. It doesn't really show up that it's been painted, so maybe, maybe that's good. Maybe it needs another coat. So, anyway. Why am I making a video of myself randomly? God, I use that word a lot. <laughs> randomly, inexplicably painting birdhouse. Something that is as boring as watching paint dry. Quite literally. And I guess that's because I tend to need ASMR videos to get to sleep lately. Now that I understand that the phenomenon is not something that every single human being has, it's a special thing, and that it's just, it's nice to have a way to go to sleep that doesn't involve taking some kind of sleep medication. Um, so I find myself watching a lot play acting role play videos, just the most randomly ridiculous, nonsensical stuff with people in costumes doing weird things. <laughs> and it's only mildly embarrassing to me, but I like watching people do things like paint bird houses, so I figured I'd join in the fun. It's tons of almost done here. I don't think that I need to do a layer at the bottom. We'll see. So this is where we're at right now. So here we are. We've painted the birdhouse with all sorts of white. One good even coat of white that is currently drying. And while I let that dry just a little bit more, <laughs> I have a second part to my birdhouse project. So, as I said, this is not really for the purpose of housing any birds <laughs> or putting bird seed in or anything like that. I don't think real animals should be in contact with the potentially toxic um, acrylic paints that I'm putting on it, um, even if it was sized in an appropriate fashion for any type of bird whatsoever. Um, anyway, because it's just a more decorative item that will work beautifully on a mantle or a bookshelf or um, even hanging 
hanging from a hook, um, sitting on your desk, or even hanging from a Christmas tree. Maybe it could be some sort of really interesting holiday ornament to make different birdhouses and throw them on your tree. That actually could be interesting. I have a friend who decorates his tree annually with just beer cans, all uh, one type of beer, usually shitty beer like Bud Light or Miller or something like that. But um, believe it or not, the silver or gold of the cans really looks beautiful with just some white Christmas lights that uh, glow and have this beautiful look to them. So cheap and easy white trash uh, Christmas tree plants. Feel free to use that idea. But alas, um, we have this white little birdhouse, and I have a great idea for making a little tiny fake bird, not a real bird, but a, um, a fake bird that will fit with the birdhouse or maybe on the birdhouse, um, or maybe multiple birds. So I have something really exciting to present. Drum roll, please, without further ado. I would like to present Model Magic. Um, this is a very cool product. It's made by Crayola, um, as is evident from the packaging. And it says right here, soft, squishy modeling material. It's soft and it's squishy, so it's really fun just to play with on a good day. And you can get this from um, any craft supplies store. Really, you should all have it. Um, they come in different colors. This one is white, which is a good base coat because you can paint Model Magic. Um, so I had spent a meeting recently with Play-Doh. We put Play-Doh on our tables so that we could um, focus more. Sometimes it's easier to focus when you have things in your hand. So I played with Play-Doh the entire meeting. So I spent hours making different kinds of food and lizards and birds. So I got practice with modeling things with my hands. And I did find that I paid better attention in the meeting um, because I was busy with my hands. My brain could stop a little bit and listen. Um, I find doodling also works, but it's just super fun. And then my hands smelled like Play-Doh and I smelled them a lot. And it brought me back to my childhood. Um, Model Magic does the same. It's something I used to play with when I was younger. Um, the key to Model Magic that makes it different from Play-Doh, even though it has a similar kind of squishy, fun feeling, is that it dries, so it'll harden into something that you can keep for a long time. It's not like Play-Doh where you just squish it and then put it away. Um, this is something you can actually model and build with. And it's even easier than other modeling um, products like Sculpey or Fimo dough, which are both really cool for making necklace beads and little cute objects. Um, but you'll find that both of those need to be placed into an oven and they off-gas a lot of um, chemicals that don't smell good into the air and I'm sure because they don't smell good they're probably not good to be breathing in. Um, so I prefer this because it air dries, so you can just take some Model Magic out and then you make whatever it is that you want to make. Um, in this case, I'm going to make a little bird. I'll make it a bird that's sized correctly for the birdhouse. Um, and then I could choose to leave it white if I wanted to stylistically make some kind of statement with the bird, <laughs> like a ghost bird or um, the casts from Pompeii. It could be a cool concept, but um, I think I likely will make it with the modeling clay, the one or several birds, and then paint them uh, in a color that somehow goes with the birdhouse. So um, the only problem with Model Magic is that once you open the package, which is very tight, and then you use some of it, you have to then find a good um, uh, package to put the rest in, and I don't think it lasts quite as long. So um, it's not super expensive, but you see this whole package is filled with clay, and if I'm only making one or two tiny little birds, I have a lot left over. So I can do another project soon, but the sooner the better. Um, 
also in looking at this package, I learned a couple of things. Um, so one is that this is somewhat flammable or not good for using with candles. So it says very specifically on the package um, to keep it away from any kind of flames and so therefore to not make candle holders with the product, which I think kind of goes without saying. Um, further, I didn't know that Crayola was a Hallmark company, which it says right there, so that was news to me. And also that this product contains no wheat. So, very useful for people who have um, gluten intolerance, wheat problems, or um, what's the name of problem where you can't have gluten? It starts with a C. I can't think of it. I can't think of it. I can't think of it, but you know what I'm talking about. So anyway, even people who have uh, wheat issues can use this because it has no wheat. And it's soft and squishy. So um, thinking of making birds, that may come later, but something I'm thinking of is starting the roof off with that jade kind of color I was talking about. Um, I think that's a good place to start is just to have the roof with that color. I'm thinking the birdhouse should be zany just because why not? I don't want it to be boring. So we can mix several colors. Um, it's funny because these uh, acrylic paints here, they all sort of, the darker colors all sort of look the same. This is, this looks like the Shake Weight commercial from Saturday Night Live, which feels kind of dirty, so I apologize for that. <laughs> um, okay, so I can tell by the side of the paint that this is blue and this is green. So my thinking is a little bit of white and then mostly green because I want it to have that green look. Oops, and then a little bit of blue. Little. Okay. And then I'm going to mix it. And then, you know, um, assuming people watching this, if anyone is watching this, have used paint before, so you know you can sort of play with colors and add different mixes to it, but this actually is a color that is what I was thinking in my mind. See that color? I know the lighting is bad. So, I'm just going to be careful and just start painting the roof this lovely green color. Now I'm being more careful with my brush strokes than I was with the white because I'm more visible. I think the base coat helped, helping this stick a little better. Okay. Thinking of which direction to make the strokes. <clears throat> now because I'm lazy and don't feel like waiting, I have some white that's not yet dry. But that will just mix in and even make my green even lighter, which is fine. Being especially careful around this piece of twine because I don't want, I don't want to paint it. I don't want it to have paint on it. I don't think that's a good look, so. Um, sort of torn about whether or not I should paint the chimney green, but I did I got some paint on it already. That's fine. I, I think I'll leave the chimney white for now. But I will paint the front here. Are those leaves? I don't know what they're called. Let's paint that front carefully so that it matches, so that the roof is this lovely green. Um, I could also, as I as I dig 
you know, deeper into these sections, I could put um, masking tape to um, mask off the spaces so that the brush strokes don't invade other territories, let's say. So, like I've already messed up the little chimney. Try not to do that again. And then I'm very careful here to not get the twine painted too much. It's not a good look. Okay, so you see there's some white patches I need to deal with, but on the whole it's looking pretty cute. And then this bottom part of the roof right here, just give that a green coat also. Something down here. My computer's making a lot of noise because it's old and it's hot. So I'm sure that's a fun sound too. In addition to the rain falling outside. And my brush strips. And some thunder. <coughs> Okay, I'm thinking, I'm thinking we're in a good place with the green. <clears throat> um, so maybe I'll do the back. Um, I want to do a reddish color. It's time to play with that. I'm going to wash my brush. I'm scared because I'm not feeling extra precise tonight. I don't want to do the front part yet because I can ruin it. So I may just do one more section and um, get my red down here. Okay, so I have my red here. Which I will shape. Not as robustly as before. <clears throat> and I'll put a little bit of that here. Just a little. I'm going to waste too much paint if I don't need to. And then I'm going to take a little drop of the white. It comes a lot in handy, obviously. And then I'll just stir those together until they make a lovely little pink. It's red and white makes it pink. It's really magic, the alchemy of colors. So now we have this color pink. And I'm going to use that on this back end of the birdhouse. And because I'm lazy, I'm not going to do any masking tape. Um, also, I don't think I have masking tape, so um, we're just going to be messy with this. And art is supposed to be messy anyway, so what I could do is switch to a more precise brush. Maybe I should make the back and the sides pink and then worry about the front. So maybe that's what I'll do. Then I could just make the eaves here red as well. And then it won't be such a concern about the masking tape. Do you ever find yourself doing this tongue thing when you concentrate? I used to do it a lot when I play video games. I'm trying not to do it because I'm not in camera. But thinking the base shouldn't be pink. But I'm going to make the underside. I'm 
try to get the brush strokes even. I'm going to go to this section right here. That goes faster. You don't have too much paint on your brush, it goes a little faster. So it's good to brush your paint off. Getting messy. Not really, because you can just paint back over any of these places. It's not too big of a deal to get some paint in places you don't expect when we want to get it. So, here we have. Nice, colorful birdhouse fun. So now my thinking is, should the front just be red as well? I think it probably should be. But I feel like I should use a smaller brush to get the fine detail in there. So I think I will shut the camera off and take a new brush and try to focus a little bit more in this way. Getting lazy, so I'm making a real big mess. Doesn't look as bad in the darkness of this room, but it's pretty bad. Again, this only costs 99 cents, so it's no big loss. And it's a nice thing to do on a rainy night. So, here we go. So I'll probably paint the base that same green from the top, and I will do it um, now because I have the color perfectly mixed here. Um, it's a little hard though, so I might wait for this to dry a little so I have the grip on it. Um, and then the next step, I will make a little bird, and then glue a bird maybe on the roof here, and glue a little bird here on this little perch. So that is my plan. Um, thanks for joining me on this fun adventure. And I will talk to you maybe never, or maybe again. So thank you.